Thank you for joining me today on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll be going through the recently published synthesis of Cajanacine by the Brown Group. Cajanacine is a dimeric stilbenoid natural product isolated from the leaves of the pigeon pea in 2014. It possesses a number of very challenging motifs, probably the most conspicuous of which is the very congested cyclobutane ring. In their approach to this target, the Brown Group imagined starting from an enantiorich alene which could be used in a 2 plus 2 cycle addition to give the desired cyclobutane motif. Afterwards, it would be necessary to carry out an epimerization as well as a conjugate addition in order to install the requisite functionality. Then, elaborating the cyclohexanone was projected to allow the completion of the synthetic wrap. In the first generation approach to the synthesis of cajamacine, the authors found a few important issues that are worth pointing out. First, they found that this equilibration that they had planned to use in order to execute an epimerization on the cyclobutane ring was actually not very favorable and could not be pushed to completion. Secondly, they were not able to carry out this conjugate addition, most likely due to the steric congestion present on the cyclobutane. For example, if we look at a model of the substrate starting from a top view and reorienting it to see the steric effect of the aromatic ring on the bottom face of the cyclobutane, it's clear that it could be very difficult to do the conjugate addition with that aromatic ring present. Okay, so let's see how the authors ended up dealing with these issues in their final route. Starting from dihydropyran, they carried out a nickel-catalyzed cross-coupling with phenylmagnesium bromide to give this terminal alcohol product, which was carried through a stall oxidation to give the aldehyde. Epoxidation of the aldehyde using n and dibromomethane gave this fragment that we'll call A. Then, this terminal alkyne bearing a protected primary alcohol was treated with n and used to open the epoxide present in A. Des-Martin oxidation allowed the synthesis of the ketone product. Now things start to get tricky. They treated the propergylic ketone with a chiral syncona alkaloid derived thiourea organocatalyst, followed by bismuth triflate in order to get the cyclobutane product. This happened by an enantioselective isomerization of the alkyne to the alene, which then underwent a bismuth promoted 2 plus 2 cycle addition. This transformation represents a chirality transfer, as the axial chirality of the alene is converted to point chirality in the form of the stereocenters present in the product. That's a very beautiful reaction converting a relatively simple starting material into a very complex natural product core. Then they were able to use this enone as a substrate for the type of conjugate addition that we were saying is difficult in the first generation approach, and deprotection of the silo protecting group with TBAF resulted in a primary alcohol. So why was this conjugate addition working while the other was not? Well, in a 3D model, let's start from the top view again. We can reorient to look at the bottom face of the cyclobutane ring and see that there's actually a reasonable amount of space for an incoming nucleophile to attack from, especially compared to the substrate in the first generation synthesis. Moving on, the authors used the Desmartin oxidation to bring the primary alcohol up to the aldehyde and the Pinnock oxidation to bring it up to the carboxylic acid, which was then esterified with a redox active ester. The virtue of this type of ester is that it could be engaged in the next step to carry out a decarboxylative coupling with nickel and an aryl zinc coupling partner. Here they were able to achieve an excellent diester selectivity by generating a radical that could be trapped by the nickel species shown to form a challenging new carbon-carbon bond. Now if we look at where we are versus where we want to be on the final target, we see that we still need to elaborate the right hand side of the molecule. To do this, the authors carried out a regioselective silylenol ether formation followed by an oxidation with IBX MPO, which allowed the formation of the enone. Then, conjugate borylation and oxidation gave the hydroxy ketone product an excellent yield, and Jones oxidation provided the 1,3 dione. This dione existed as a tautomeric mixture of a keto form as well as two enol forms. Although the authors had trouble installing a single allyl group, they were able to carry out a bisallylation with palladium and allyl acetate followed by a nickel-catalyzed mono and an O-methylation that had to regioselectively discriminate between two potential oxygen nucleophiles. Finally, cross-metathesis with Hoveda Grubb's second-generation metathesis catalyst and isobutene followed by a TBAF deprotection gave the final target, cajanosine. Overall, a very interesting synthesis that incorporates a nice stereoselective organocatalytic 2 plus 2 approach, as well as a very nice nickel-catalyzed coupling with a redox active ester. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please support us by liking and subscribing, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you next time.